All right, let's get to our science. First up is an animation wheel. Now, every character here is in another position and I'm able to move them and pose them in different spots and different places. And the way animation works, it's just a series of pictures over and over. Now, look how this guy ends up dancing. Watch. Now, if you just look at the middle, at the reflective image, it looks like, I mean, it looks like he's going crazy, but it's just a series of all of these blurs combining to make that one image in the middle. Look, you can't see each individual one, but you can see the result over there. All right, that was just a bonus. Now let me show you the color experiments that I wanted to do with you and the gyroscope experiments that I wanted to show you. Let's get to it, get ready to learn. All right guys, welcome back to our full science lesson now. I hope you like that little animation experiment here. There are lots of different poses you could do. You could jump, you could run. This one's a dance. Anyway, that was that. Now, as far as the experiment that we're doing today, I wanna to teach you guys something cool about color. Now, there are two ways to mix color, either by physical color, and that's generally when you have food coloring. Primary colors of physical color is green, blue, and red. Now, when we're gonna put each color in a cup, here's some red, here's some green, and here's some blue. When you mix them all together, what color are you gonna get? Well, this is called subtractive color mixing because when we start mixing the colors, this is sort of like a purple, purple brownish almost because there's a little more red in it. And now adding a green to it, you're only gonna see brown. So when I added the three physical primary colors to it, it becomes brown. You don't, you don't really create a new color. It's called subtractive color mixing because we're subtracting wavelengths out of the color it's not layering the wavelengths on top of each other to make a new color. It's just mixing all the wavelengths together and making one new color wavelength. And that's why it's just a darker color. That's subtractive color mixing. The cool part is, and I guess it could be cool if you're doing subtractive color mixing and you're only mixing two colors, such as a blue and red makes purple, a blue and yellow makes green. But now I wanna to talk to you about additive color mixing, when we're actually creating a new color and that's where lights come in. Now, this little device right here, as you see, has all the three, the same three colors that we just did here. Blue, red, and green, right? Same as the food coloring. But, when we mix these colors, when we mix light colors, the result's gonna be completely different. We're actually gonna create a new color. We're gonna create many new colors, and this is called additive color mixing because we're adding the layers onto each other. We're not taking anything away. And that's how we create new colors. And that's why when we mix all of the colors together, we're not gonna get a nasty brown black. I mean, if you like brown black, it's not nasty, but we're not gonna get a brown black. We're gonna get a white because we're just putting different layers on top of each other. Nothing is mixing with each other as far as wavelengths getting destroyed. All the wavelengths are there and you're seeing all of the different colors together and that's how you see white. Think of it as layers. Here's a blue, here's a red, here's a green. And nothing is combining like they combine here. So your eyes are picking up every wavelength when you're mixing light and I'm gonna prove it to you because if your eyes are picking up every color, you're gonna see every color and that's gonna be white. Let's shut the lights and you'll see. All right. So here are the three colors. Let's come closer to the wall here, and we're gonna put it on the wall, but we're gonna do one color at a time. So let's see, we have the red over here, and I'm gonna aim this at the wall. So we have red. Now I'm gonna turn on the blue. So as you see right here, you're gonna see a purple in the middle right over there. And when I add, see there's just the blue, and I'm adding the red over there. It's like a magenta, like a purple in between, right? When I add the green to it, look at that, we'll do one by one again. Look at that yellow, the blue and the red, sorry, the green and the red, make a yellow in additive color mixing. Here's the green, there's the red. Look at that, look at that third color that it just created. How about the blue? If I add the blue here, 
If I add the blue to the green, of a bluish greenish blue and green don't make a new color but now and I'm gonna do all three look at that come closer look at that we have the yellow there we have the magenta there from the blue and the red we have a little bit of it's orange I guess the wall definitely colors it as well and then in the middle all the colors mixing Unlike the liquids that we just did with the physical colors, when you mix light together, all the colors, it makes white, as you see in the middle. So that's just from these three colors, and that's pretty cool. All right, let's get the lights back on. All right, let's get into some physics. Now, the difference between science and physics is not much. Physics is a branch of science, and physics is, more, is a more specific type of science. It's really the study of matter and energy, and that's what I'm gonna show you now. In this little toy here, this fun kids toy, it's actually a high level demonstration of physics, of science, and how lots of things in the world work that you don't even realize that have this thing in it. This is a gyroscope. A gyroscope is found in so many different things, so many things that keep the world spinning because this gyroscope does exactly that. It spins on its axis. Anything that has something spinning in it pretty much is a safe bet to say it has a gyroscope in it, such as a plane, a helicopter, trains, anything that has a spinning motor that needs to stay stable up in the air has a gyroscope in it. And look how that's balancing on my finger. Now, the reason that's balancing is because of the angular momentum that this gyroscope has. The angular momentum, if you feel it, it's trying to push the opposite way of my hand because like we said, it's at an angle and it still spins but it's battling gravity. So while it wants to fall, where is the starter? While it wants to fall, it can't fall until it slows down because the quicker the angular momentum, the stronger it can, it can fight the gravity. See how that's spinning even at an angle? Now, let me show you something cool because all you, you can do, all you need is a string I'll spin sideways also, look at that. Now this is super important to have in a plane, or like we said, anything that needs to keep its orientation, a helicopter, because a lot of times, planes, helicopters, anything that is up in the air or is being driven, that you lose, you lose a sense of where you are up in the air. So fighter jets, for example, this will stay upright no matter how it spins, no matter how it falls, it'll always stay upright. Or at least it'll always give you the direction that you know that it was set to. If it's set to this direction, you know it'll always be that way, no matter which way you turn it, it'll stay that direction. Now, that's one way to start a top. That's one way to get something spinning. But there are lots of different ways to get things spinning. Now, not everything is a gyroscope that you need a lot of power by force to get going. This is called a wind top or a wind gyro. Now it's not, it's a gyroscope just for the fact that it spins, but look how this gets going. Just by a little bit of air power, watch. And it's spinning, this is like a windmill. Now the wind has a ton of power actually do this from underneath. This is a magnet. And it's spinning. So there are lots of different ways, lots of different parts of science and physics to get things moving, to get things going. Now, as far as a gyroscope again, as I was saying, the way it's spun, here I'll give it another spin and demonstrate this again because I wanted to show one other thing to you that can sort of be, have a similar explanation. So the angular momentum is battling gravity, right? So that's why it's not falling because the spinning gives it that angular momentum. Momentum is, is speed and the angular is at an angle, so it's an angle speed, a speed of a direction. Fighting against the gravity that wants to just pull it straight down. Similar, and I'll show you in a second, this has its own center of gravity that was created when I pulled that cord. And that's why it's not falling. Something else that has its own center of gravity that you're used to seeing that may not fall is this magic bird. 
that you put on the tip of your finger and it balances. I'm sure you've seen this before. And the way this works is because it's weighted. The weight is all the way in the nose, which is really the middle of the bird. So while you see these big giant wings, these are hollow, these are light, the back is light, the weight is on the center of the bird. So just like the gyroscope, it's another way of balancing out its gravitational pull, and that's why it balances. Who knew that this would be somehow related to a gyroscope? But science is cool, and like I said, physics is cool, and it's just really interesting to see how things work. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day, stay well, and I'll see you soon.